Hi guys. See drama greets you. We will review Chinese drama as beautiful as you episode 38. After Tong acquired Guanghua, they gained a technological core and opened up a certain market. However, their small maneuvers never ceased. Su Zizou discovered that several companies that previously cooperated with them suddenly terminated their contracts. Analyzing the reasons there were no conflicts during the cooperation period. Although the other party said the contract had expired, they didn't specify the real reason. Not only in the technical department, but Su Li also noticed these anomalies in the sales department. They reported these findings to Ji Sheng, who instructed her team to investigate the specific reasons. Ji Sheng switched back to her workaholic mode. Han Ting personally picked her up from work. Even though it was very late, Ji Sheng was still working at her desk. Han Ting playfully coaxed her to go home and rest. Unable to resist her boyfriend's enthusiastic invitation, Ji Sheng and Han Ting went home hand in hand. Su Li invited Su Zai Zhao for dinner. Su Zai Zhao specially changed into a suit and brought a bouquet of flowers, explaining that this was the same type of flower Su Li had brought the first time she visited their rented startup workspace. Her smile back then lit up Su Zai Zhao's life and gave him the motivation to keep moving forward. Su Li noticed Su Zai Zhao's feelings for her. Over the past few days, she repeatedly heard in the company that Su Zai Zhao gave up the opportunity to study in Germany largely because of her. Besides, she had witnessed Su Zai Zhao's growth and knew he genuinely cared for her. She smiled and told Su Zai Zhao that she didn't actually like eating Western food, she only did so to maintain her image as a top salesperson. In fact, she loved stinky tofu the most. Su Zai Zhao immediately agreed to go out and buy it for her. Han Ting picked Ji Xing up from work, and they went to the company's underground parking lot. Suddenly, a car sped towards Ji Xing. Han Ting quickly pulled Ji Xing to his side, and although she avoided the car, Han Ting, whose old injury had not fully healed, was severely hurt again. Ji Xing immediately called Tang Song, and her older sister Han Yuan also heard some news. It seemed that the kidnapping incident from last time was not over. Han Yuan reported this matter to the chairman. Grandpa Han flew back to the mainland overnight to visit Han Ting in the hospital. Seeing his grandson so seriously injured, even needing surgery, Grandpa Han told Han Ting to rest assured and recover in the hospital while he thoroughly investigated the matter. While Han Ting was hospitalized rumors appeared in the market claiming that Dongyang Group's implantable medical devices contained radioactive substances. Su Zai Zhao and the technical department conducted experiments and indeed found traces of radioactive material. They were shocked, as the production and testing processes had followed previous procedures. They began to investigate which step had gone wrong. Hanhai Company held a special press conference, publicly proving with detectors that their devices had no issues. They demonstrated that some substandard testing equipment in the market could detect radioactive elements in any item. Many reporters witnessed that the detection device in Ji Zing's hand could even detect radioactive substances in their laptops, so they no longer doubted the quality of the medical devices. Once again, the crisis was resolved. The entire company praised Ji Xing for her decisiveness and crisis management skills. During this time, Han Ting was recuperating in the hospital while Ji Xing meticulously managed to stabilize the company's stock. Thanks for watching. See you soon.